Hello there, fellow bullet journal enthusiast. It's moon month, so why not come and draw some moons with me? I'm Jules and I make videos on drawing, planning and publishing every darn Friday. This week we are drawing moons as it's my theme for the bullet journal this November. Why now? Why moons? Well, this month makes me think of when I was a little girl, I used to go to a place called Brockham in Surrey and it was the biggest firework display around. I used to go with my dad and quite often at that time of the year the skies were clear and you'd get the moon, sometimes the full moon if you're really lucky and it's raining down all its moonbeams on you, it's very atmospheric. Plus, I really like hairs, there's my little hair. And as we all know, hairs love moon dancing. So grab something to draw with, something to draw on, and come and draw with me. I'm starting off with a photograph of the moon, just for a bit of reference, and my marker pen. And this is a Zebra Ola gel pen, and it's actually got a really lovely line. I've never used one of these before, but I'd recommend it if you can find them anywhere. So just drawing three circles to start with, and using a Crayola Super Tips marker just to give it some of those sort of shaded areas uh, pretty much just copying what I can see on the photograph that I've got over there in the corner you don't have to get it all exact it's just to give it a bit of um, shading and craters just to give it that feel of the moon and then here I'm just going to be giving some shaded areas round the edges just to, um, to show the different phases of the moon. And remember that those dark bits, you can't have stars uh, in there. I've seen lots of people draw stars there and it's very pretty, but completely physically impossible to have stars in those bits because the moon is still there, remember, it's just in shadow. And this is a way of doing a sort of bit of reverse. So you're uh, thinking about the space around rather than the actual object itself. Then moving on to a bit of drawing this time. So I've got cartridge paper there, I've got my Stadler 8B pencil, which is very crumbly and soft. So I'm just using it quite, um, quite sort of smudgily, if you like, and using my finger just to smudge it out a bit. And then if you, if you lean your pencil over, so it's at at least a 45 degree angle, you get a much better effect than if you're uh, using it straight, straight up and down, vertically. Use your finger to smudge it as much as you like, and you can also use this, which is a putty rubber. And it's not actually rubbing the whole thing out, it's just smudging it, more or less. When you're drawing the craters, remember that the light is hitting it from one side. So what you're drawing is actually where the dark bits are. Hold your pencil to the side like I am if you want to, because again, it makes some really lovely marks on the paper. And then to do more detailed work, you can hold your pencil more vertically. And then that just sort of scribbly effect gives texture to the sky and makes it look like this, the moon is shining and those are the moon beams coming out. And there again, just I'm leaving, I'm leaving a sort of white border around so it looks like the moon is really shining, like it's a really bright, bright night, bright and clear night. Use your finger to rub it out. If you're using a really soft pencil, that's one of the, the B's, then that should be quite easy to do. And these are chalk pastels, not oil pastels, but chalk pastels. And you can do the same sort of thing with these as well. You can smudge them. You can use um, a brush if you want to, or your finger, or the putty rubber, or a bit of tissue. Anything you can get your hands on, really. Now, watercolour. One of my faves. So if you've seen any of my watercolour videos before, I just wet the page really liberally 
You can't see it particularly well, but I have drawn a very, very faint circle just to so that I know exactly where the moon's going to go. And I'm leaving a, a quite a wide gap around that circle. Dropping in different color, different sorts of blues and grays. And then this is, I'm copying again what I'm seeing on that photograph of the moon. And instead of starting off with a wet uh, circle for the moon, I'm actually going in dry, but I've got quite a wet brush. Remember to subscribe and ding the bell, that way you'll always be notified when I upload a video on drawing, planning or publishing. And if you're interested in making your own children's books, I have something that might be useful for you. If you've got a burning desire to publish your own children's book, then check out my course which gets you from words on the page to published book in your hands and I'll leave the link below. Now, back to what we're doing in front of you. I am actually going to be using the photograph of the moon now, so I've given it some colour with the chalk pastels and then I've wetted my brush, it's got a little bit of the grey paint on it and I'm just going in to darken up some of those areas and give it some colour. So I've used some purple and a bit of blue. And then once it's dried, cut it out and then I'm going to mark on the paper where this circle is going to go this moon circle is going to go just with a bit of pencil and this pencil is uh, a 4B because I don't need it to be so dark. Going back in then with the wet, very very wet large brush, it's lovely using a large brush because it, it's um, you can just do so much more in the way of texture with large brushes so I'd highly recommend getting yourself a large, uh, I think that one's a 16. So it's wet and now I'm going in with some of those chalk crayons, different colours, greys, blues and I think I, uh, some black at the end and then going over that into that wet paper with some watercolour here. Giving myself a bit of a margin around where the moon is going to go and I'm using all different, different blues there. You can see that one's much more of a sort of summertime seaside blue. Um, and then some more black and going back into it again where it's wet uh, the, the chalk pastel does spread a little bit and then once I've done that I'm going to stick my moon in the middle to make sure it's the right way up and I'm just not quite happy with that black so I'm going to go back in again with another very very wet brush just to finish it off now in my actual journal, um, I've done something a bit different, so I'm just quickly going to show you what I did in the journal, but hopefully that's given you some ideas as to how you might want to draw a moon. So has that given you any inspiration for your theme? Or maybe you're drawing something that's got a moon in it at the moment. I find myself drawing a lot of moons in my books and I'll put a link below so you can have a look at the one that I've drawn most moons in. If you found this video useful or at the very least mildly entertaining then do subscribe, ding the bell and tell your chums. Thanks for watching, I'm off to don my hair costume and find the nearest full moon to dance under. I'll see you next time. Nanu Nanu!